Well, good morning, everyone, wherever you're at. I hope that God touches your heart in a special way as we worship together on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Pentecost is one of the high points in the life of the church. It's where the Holy Spirit is poured out on believers, and, and they all understand each other. They're unified, and they're empowered to be witnesses to God's mighty works in the world. So we celebrate that today, and I hope that God touches your heart in a special way as we worship together this morning. Several announcements. Uh, again, let me lift up this grand celebration and praise of the backpacks. Our goal was 100 backpacks to be filled for Ishe and Esu, and we actually fulfilled over, I think the last count was something around 122. So praise be to God for that uh, tremendous outreach to our friends in Zimbabwe. Uh, we continue to worship online, so I hope that each and every week you'll continue to join us until we get word that we can gather back together, whatever that means, whatever that looks like, whatever the new normal might be. We also uh, just ask for your prayers for those in our newsletter, in the bulletin, or in the uh, newsletter, uh, on our prayer concern list. Several folks are uh, dealing with health concerns at this point, and so we just covet your prayers for those folks. But we're here to worship, we're here to praise God, we're here to give Him the glory on this day. The Holy Spirit enlivens us and emboldens us, us to God's ways and God's will. And so let us just empty ourselves to be filled with that Spirit this morning as we worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good morning. I hope you're ready to lift your voices in song to the Lord, singing, Come Thou Fount, Come Thou King. Thank you. 
Teach me some, Lord, your son, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. I was lost. In utter darkness, till you came and rescued me. I was bound by all my sin when your love came and set me free. Now my soul can sing a new song. Now my heart has found a home. Your grace is always with me, ever be alone. Come now, found, come now, King, come now, precious Prince of Peace. Hear your bride to you we sing. Come now, found. of peace, hear your bride to you we sing, come thou fount of our blessing. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Come now, fount. Come now, fount. Come now, king. Come now, precious prince of Thou fount of our blessing, come thou fount, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace, hear your bride to you we sing, come thou fount of our blessing. Come, Holy Spirit, come into this place. You're welcome here. You're welcome in our hearts and in our worship. Empower us and teach us, transform us, shape us, so that we might know and live different. So that we might be empowered to let go of the shackles that hold us back, the strongholds that have a grip in our life, so that we might be free 
to be the people that you created us to be. So Lord, as we worship today, we pray for those who are hurting, those who are in need, those suffering from isolation and depression due to the pandemic, those who are struggling with illness and physical uh, issues, those who are emotionally distraught, fighting battles in their own minds, with their own thoughts. And we pray for those who are struggling spiritually today. Lead us by your Spirit, Lord, so that we may embrace that life that you've promised to us as we follow Jesus faithfully. Now as we pray together in unity, in one voice, with one heart, under one Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, we lift up the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. the fire. Touch again, O 
got my hands full this morning kids it's time for time with young disciples so gather around as we hear God's word proclaimed and celebrate on this great day that we come together to worship well full and if you notice I have my hands full with balloons and uh, they're all different shapes and sizes aren't they I've just put that thing in front of my face uh, there's round ones and big ones and small ones. Here's one that's kind of pear-shaped and one that's, I don't know, it's got a lot of curves to it. This one that uh, looks like a star and floats up in the air all by itself. You know, when I think about all the different kinds of balloons, I think about all the different kinds of people there are in the world. We're all different, aren't we? We all come in different shapes and sizes. We're all given different gifts and graces we all have different experiences and yet we're all the same we're balloons right in a sense we're all different but yet we're the same you know in today's one of today's scriptures lessons for Pentecost is Acts chapter 2 and in Acts chapter 2 what happens is that the disciples are gathered together and there's great crowds of people from all different nations and they speak all different languages. But when the Holy Spirit arrives, all of a sudden, they all can understand each other. Even though they're different, they are unified through the work of the Holy Spirit, and they can all understand one another. You know, it reminds me of God's work in our lives. Now, as he continues to work and transform us through the Holy Spirit, he breathes life into us as we accept Jesus Christ and follow him. He searches our hearts and helps us to, to live in a way that honors God through our behaviors and through our words, through our thoughts. And he continues to breathe life into us. And as that spirit works and works and works, we become more like Jesus Christ in our lives. And more life is breathed into our lives. Now, I'm not full of helium, but what happens is, this balloon is full of helium. And as the work of the Holy Spirit transforms our life, it lifts us up. It lifts us up and fills us with great joy. So that it's almost like we're above, uh, in a sense, above the troubles and the cares and the concerns of the world because we know we can trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to see us through anything. That we have the comforter and teacher, the Holy Spirit, to provide uh, whatever we need. We have the Holy Spirit to give us gifts that we can be witnesses out into the world to the love that Jesus showed to us and shows in all the world. So I hope this morning that you'll remember the power of the Holy Spirit that can lift us up, transform us, and change us so that we might be the people God created us to be and witnesses to the love of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we know there are many different 
people, many nations in the world. But through the work of your Holy Spirit, you can bring us together. You can transform our lives so that we can understand one another. You work in our lives each and every day to breathe life into us and to transform us so that we might be different. So help us, Lord, to shine the light into this world. Breathe your life into us. Pour out your Holy Spirit and help us develop those gifts you give us. I thank you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name. Amen. I'll clean up my mess for the musician. nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your presence tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Let us become more aware. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. 
Today's scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians 13, 3 through 13. It's a letter that Paul writes to the church at Corinth, and he says this, Therefore I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is, is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but, all, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. Now, to teach one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are the work of the one and the same Spirit. And he distributes them to each one just he determines just as a body though one has many parts but all of its many parts form one body so it is with Christ we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body whether Jews or Gentiles slave or free we are all given the one spirit to drink this is the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Well, months ago, uh, as I was, I was planning worship here at Cassidy, and it, it always amazes me how the Spirit works, uh, even though most of the time I'm totally oblivious to it. I don't know if you have that experience, but... You know, you do something or you say something or something happens in your life and all of a sudden, it's like the light bulb comes in and you see God has been working through the Holy Spirit the whole entire time. Paul in this letter talks about how people are very different and unique, but yet they're one. They're united by the, the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes we don't think of the Holy Spirit as being the one who unites God's people as the body of Christ. People from all walks of life. You know, we're very different, aren't we? We're di very different folks. And uh, we have different likes and dislikes and different experiences and so on and so forth. And I got to thinking about how those different likes and dislikes uh, shape who we are. I mean, some people are Coca-Cola drinkers, and some people are Pepsi drinkers, right? Some people like coffee, some people don't. Now, I like hot coffee, but I don't understand the people all the time that like that stuff with the ice in it. What's that about? Well, some people like to take active vacations. They like to go motorcycle riding or skiing or uh, something exciting, exhilarating. They like maybe to hike or, or explore God's creation. Some people would rather relax than just lay on a beach. By the way, I'm going to the beach next week. So some people prefer, you know, uh, some type of candy bar or some, something like that, uh, or like gumdrops or something, while other people prefer chocolate, Right? There's those people that just live for chocolate. Some people think yogurt's pretty nasty. I discovered yogurt, of all things, on a plane ride across to Africa on a mission trip. And I didn't know what it was. It just came in this container. And I found out that yogurt's pretty good as long as there's enough sugar in it and enough fruit. We all have different backgrounds, too, don't we? I mean, some folks grew up on a farm and... Or maybe in the country, in the suburbs, in the city. We all have those different 
background. Some of us come from well-to-do families, and some of us struggled growing up because we grew up in poverty and in hardship. Some of us grew up where, you know, our folks were kind of lenient. They let us do whatever we, we felt led to do and just let us explore life for what it was. And then there's families who, of course, were a lot more strict and not as permissive. Some of us were born in the United States and other people come from other countries. And we all have different experiences that have shaped our lives, haven't we? I mean, some people have gone into the military and some people haven't. Some people have experienced divorce in their life and some, some people struggle with other things. Maybe uh, as a kid, you, you grew up and, and things were kind of fluid and, and permissive, but you also moved all over the place. We all have these different experiences that make us unique and shape who we are. But, with all those differences, with all the differences in our experiences and our gifts and graces, we're all one family, as Paul says. We're all one body. And we can choose to focus on all the differences that there are. Or we can focus in on what keeps us together as the human race and especially as Christians. The Spirit unifies us and brings us together. You know, we live in an, a very interesting time. These last several months have certainly highlighted how challenging things can be in our society, in our nation, in our world. But even before that, and, and I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant, because uh, you see, I recently had this experience through social media. And now there's this term out there, and the term is trolling. Now I'm not talking about fishing. Trolling is when you become a troll, and in other words, you go on somebody's uh, post or somebody's uh, page, or you make a comment on, on a particular issue, and you're trying to incite some kind of conflict, some kind of hostility. You're baiting that person to get into a debate with you. Well, it, this happened to me about three weeks ago. I did a chapel time on a Wednesday, and I talked about the power of the Trinity and how the Holy Spirit transforms us, and when we accept Jesus into our lives and all of those things, and sure enough, the troll pops up. Now, I don't want to get into a battle here. I'm trying to use restraint. But the person was saying, there's no such thing as the Holy Trinity. Read your Bible. It's clear there's only one God, and Jesus is the Son, and Jesus and God are the same, and blah, 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 blah. blah. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Well, I read the Bible many, many times. And it says that God is three and one all at the same time. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each a unique person in the Trinity. Each with a unique and uh, different aspect. Luckily, even though I was really tempted, to, I wasn't going to respond on Facebook directly to him, but I started typing out in, his, in a private message how you know, I was going to show him and teach him and blah, blah, blah. Don't get sucked in by trolls, and don't be a troll. It just creates division, hostility, uh, anxiety, anger, frustration. Don't be a troll. Well, we also know that there's other divisions that we face. Because there's racism, there's sexism, there's ageism. There's all those things that shape us into tribes where we defend our own territory, our own beliefs. We try to bait people in to hostility and division. We want to be right rather than be in relationship. God didn't create us to be right. He created us to be in relationship with one another. To see the differences 
in each and every one of us to see the diversity of God's beautiful creation in each smiling face or each person that we encounter. No matter where they're from, no matter how old, how young, the color of their skin, whatever it is, we're called to be one. I've been particularly saddened over the last few days because division is engulfing our nation. There's political division. Again, there's Democrats and Republicans fighting over who's in charge and who can have control and all of those things. There's church division. Not only all the different denominations, but issues within each and every denomination, which threatens to divide and to separate and to break apart what Christ has put together. We remember, we may not all believe in the same things like the Holy Trinity or, or, or how to baptize somebody or how to have communion or, or this or that or other some kind of other doctrinal issue, but we're still the church, one church. One family, united by the Holy Spirit. But the thing that's disturbed me the most is what's happened uh, in Minneapolis to George Floyd. I know that we have fine men and women who serve in law enforcement to protect and to serve so that we might enjoy the freedoms that we have, so that we might be safe and secure. But what happened to George Floyd was horrific, inexcusable. It was heartbreaking. But what happens next? How do we address those Things that divide us and, and pull us apart and separate us. Well, some folks decided that protesting was the way to do it, and that's fine. We all have the right of pe peaceful protest. But this morning, as I was listening in on the news, they said that recently over 30 cities across our country have not experienced just a peaceful protest to draw attention to the issues, the social issues that we face in our nation. But they rioted. You know, I don't understand that. I don't understand when we use violence to prove that we're right. When we make victims of other people to prove that we're in the right. When we fail to see that that's not the way. It's not the way to separate ourselves into each tribe. It's to be unified. Let the Holy Spirit work in our lives. You know, let me go back to a, a leader, a civil rights leader, uh, you all know him, Martin Luther King Jr. He said this, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Again, I don't understand people rioting and creating victims, but I do understand that we live in a broken world. That sometimes we want to be right so bad that we act out in a way that creates more harm. It's because of sin. One colleague put it this way, sin is a destructive force. It always divides, separates, and splinters. It divides a person within themselves and against themselves. It's produced the constant fight and struggle which we are all aware of in our own lives and in the life of the church, in the life of our nation. Consequently, the central object of salvation, in a sense, is to reunite, 
to bring together, to reconcile, to restore the unity that God created before sin and the fall produced this horrific, terrible havoc between God and man, between person and person, and within a person themselves. You see, unity, the unity that we have in Christ is part of the grand design of God's creation. And one of the particularly unique things about our Christian calling is to preserve the unity of the Spirit in a bond of peace. Traditionally, I would preach on the Acts 2 text this morning, talking about that day of Pentecost, again, where all the people were gathered, the disciples were gathered and waiting uh, as Jesus has instructed them. And as I spoke of in the children's sermon, what amazed me is that there were all different people there from all different beliefs, all different nations. They all spoke different languages. I I would have preached on that text. I might have compared it to the account in the Old Testament, the Tower of Babel, where God separated everything because they were trying to lift themselves up above God. It was where we get all these different languages and all this separation, right? But the day of Pentecost was a day in which that event at the Tower of Babel, in a sense, was reversed. And God's plan was revealed that grace and love and forgiveness and Jesus was available to all people of all nations, of all languages, of all races, of all colors, of all creeds. Jesus just didn't die for a few folks. He died for the world. He died for all of us. As different as we can be, he died for you so that you might have new life, empowered by the Holy Spirit to witness to him, to witness to God's love and Jesus' work in your life. And Paul reminds us, when we join in with the family of God, those differences dissolve. Now that's not to say that there aren't differences. Diversity is different than differences, right? Like I said earlier, I mean, there's a lot of different denominations. There's a lot of different beliefs about the Christian faith alone. There's a lot of different political views in our world. There's a lot of different ways we approach life. That's not a bad thing. Paul reminds us that we're one body gifted by the Holy Spirit with unique gifts. Difference is okay. Diversity is okay. But we're also reminded that the Holy Spirit gives us gifts to build one another up and not tear each other down. To see people the way God sees them. If truly we are all created in the image of God, every time you look into the face of another human being, you are seeing the face of God. I hope that we can be unified. That we remember Paul's words Just as a body, the one has many parts. All of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. We were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we are all given one spirit to drink. You know, whatever decisions we face, whether it's political, whether it's uh, ecclesial or the church, whether it's racial, gender, whatever it is, age, there's one solution. Just one. I heard someone, uh, more actually more than one person, commenting on the events of this week and they all finally said faith in Jesus Christ is the answer what we need in the church isn't another doctrine or decree 
another debate. What we need in our country is not another law, another policy, another program, another activist group, another social justice thing. What we need in our lives and in this country and in our church is a great spiritual awakening. We need to allow God to transform us as He promised He would, to surrender our lives fully and wholly to Jesus Christ. Then we'll learn what Jesus says. Love your enemies. Turn the other cheek. Love one another as you love yourself. We'll learn to live that way. We'll learn to see life and people in a different way. We'll learn through the Holy Spirit the ways and the will of God in our lives, for our nation, for our church, for everything. I hope that this morning, wherever you are in your Christian walk, that you allow that to happen. That you allow... God to fully take over your heart and your life and you just, just surrender it all. You know, Jesus said, if you want to find your life, you got to lose it. You got to lose all that bias and prejudice and dis disdain and divisiveness in your life. You've got to lose those strongholds and those struggles. You've got to give it away to the power of the Holy Spirit, to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the loving Father, to transform you and give you new life. It's not going to come in the self-help section of Books A Million. It's not going to come into a webinar where some motivating, motivating, motivational speaker gives you some sound life guidelines and advice. It's not going to come from your sheer willpower to make that change. It's only going to come by turning your life over and surrendering to God's will, accepting Jesus in your heart, and letting the Holy Spirit work. Well, I leave you with this blessing this morning. On this day of Pentecost, a member at Cassidy sent me this a few days ago. And it says this, There's one thing you must understand about this blessing. It is not for you alone. It is stubborn about this. Don't even try to lay hold of it if you are by yourself thinking that you can carry it on your own. To bear this blessing, you must first take yourself to a place where everyone does not look like you or think like you. A place where they do not believe precisely as you believe where their thoughts and ideas and gestures are not exact echoes of your own. Bring your sorrow. Bring your grief. Bring your fear. Bring your weariness, your pain, your disgust at how broken the world is, how fractured, how fragmented by its fightings, its wars, its hungers, its penchant for power, its ceaseless repetition of history, it refuses to rise above. I will not tell you this blessing will fix all that. But in the place where you have gathered, wait, watch, listen. Lay aside your inability to be surprised, your resistance to do what you don't understand. See then whether this blessing turns to flame on your tongue, sets you to speaking which you cannot fathom, or opens your ear to a language beyond your imagining that comes as a knowing in your bones, a clarity in your heart that tells you this is the reason we were made for this ache that finally opens us up, for this struggle this grace that scorches us towards one another and into the blazing day. Amen.
Amen. Just one life I have for living in your service, send me out, source of love, of faith, and power, come, oh, come and fill me Jesus name we pray all God's people said amen
Well, I extend this invitation before a benediction. Once again, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ or there's things that are in your life that need to be dealt with, I just invite you today to pray to our Lord and Savior, to give your life totally to Him. Engage us on Facebook. Ask me questions. Don't be a troll. Just ask the question. As we depart today, and by the way, I noticed I got filled with the Spirit this morning. We've gone over a little bit. But it's a good thing. It means God's at work. Whenever your heart is broken for the things that break God's heart, you know you're in the right place. So may God's grace and love surround you this week. May you walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And may the Holy Spirit embolden you and energize you to go and to make a difference in this world out of the love that you share with Jesus Christ. Amen.